Sure. Well, there's uh, several reasons. The, the core use case, the foundational element of Foursquare is people checking in to let their friends know where they are. So it's a way to find your friends when you're out and about in the real world. Uh, in addition, we've started to build more types of value on top of the check-in. So as we learn more about where people like to go and where your friends like to go, we are able to offer you great recommendations that are really smart and, and targeted uh, to suggest where you might want to go for your next meal or to get your next drink or to, to buy your next pair of shoes. So we're thinking a lot about local discovery and recommendations that are built on top of the check-in. The other thing on top of the check-in is deals and discounts and savings. We work with merchants to help them offer deals, uh, we call them specials, for their most loyal customers. We have several million at this point. We have uh, over 10 million uh, folks have registered on Foursquare and the, uh, the service is quite global. About half of the usage is outside the United States. Uh, we have huge interest from all types of third parties who want to work with Foursquare and communicate with our users. And I think that's because we touch them in a really unique way, which is geographical and local. And so if you're a big media company or if you're a, um, a retailer, or an advertiser, you have an opportunity to, to work with Foursquare to reach users in specific places in the real world. And that's a very different experience for, uh, for, for many companies. Sure, so we have hundreds of media companies, both uh, big TV companies, newspapers, magazines, blogs, the, the whole range of media companies have come to Foursquare to, to work with us to reach our users. And I think for media companies it's cool because, again, they're not able to normally talk to their users or reach their users in specific geographies. If you're a TV channel, you have a relationship with your users that's very um, fixed to the living room, perhaps, where your television set is. And Foursquare gives you an opportunity to reach people in the real world. So, for example, we have a, a really interesting partnership with Bravo. It's a TV channel in the United States owned by NBC Universal, and they do all these kind of funny, silly shows about um, reality TV shows. Uh, um, uh, Sheer Genius, for example, which is a reality TV, sh TV show about cutting your hair, <laughs> or uh, Housewives of New Jersey. These kind of funny uh, reality shows, and on Foursquare. What they do is, um, <clears throat> for users who follow them on Foursquare, they uh, give you badges if you go to all the different places that the real Housewives of New Jersey went to in the TV show, or if you go to all the different beauty parlors that are featured on the TV show Sheer Genius, which is a, which is a Bravo TV show I mentioned. And so the point is, the content that TV channels and shows are offering users in this TV universe can now be brought into the real world for a more experiential marketing uh, relationship with their viewers. It's a way to take that viewer relationship and bring it out to a new place. That's, that's a part of it. There's the social media advertising aspect of it. That's right. When someone checks into a Bravo location, that check-in goes to their Foursquare friends. And if the user so chooses, it also can get sent to Facebook and Twitter. So there's big distribution for the messaging. That, that's right. But I think it's also about connecting more deeply with, with your fans. If you're Bravo, if you're MTV, if you're the History Channel, these are some of the TV partners we work with. It's a way to take... Uh, again, the relationship you have with them in the living room and, and bring it out into the real world. Another example uh, is um, how TV channels use something called tips within Foursquare. Tips for us are like mini reviews. Within Foursquare, you're able to write just a few sentences about your favorite coffee shop. Make sure you sit near the window in the south because that's where the sun comes in or your favorite bar make sure you order the strawberry daiquiri it's not on the menu so tips can be used by media companies to bring their content out in the real world we have a really fun deal with the history channel it's another cable channel in the united states uh, where they live leave historical tips about different places in the real world so for example if you check in to the empire state building in new york city you would get a tip on Foursquare from the History Channel that might say, did you know the New York, the, uh, the Empire State Building 
was built in 1934, and every single week a new floor was 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 built. So that's how fast the construction was, or, or, or something. So the point is, if the History Channel is taking what their brand is known for, and the kind of content that they normally give someone on TV, and they're delivering it in this new innovative format. We have a, a, an NBC news channel, it's a local NBC news channel in the Philadelphia area that uses Foursquare very aggressively. They have uh, famous local TV anchors and they get users to follow them on Foursquare and the anchors check in as they run around Philadelphia covering news stories and so it's a way for users to get a sense of where the news is breaking. That's one example. Another is the Wall Street Journal. Uh, of course on one hand they're a national paper but they also do very specific New York City news as well. And the Wall Street Journal has experimented with Foursquare as a platform for breaking news. About a year ago there was a uh, luckily a failed car bombing event in Times Square in New York City, you, you may remember. And what the Wall Street Journal did was use Foursquare to uh, send a message to all of, the, all of the Wall Street Journal's Foursquare followers that said breaking news, bomb threat in Times Square, uh, don't go near Times Square. And so it was a very um, geographic specific news story and it actually had some utility as the Wall Street Journal was able to warn people to uh, stay away from this dangerous area. R Radar uh, is an exciting new product that allows Foursquare to communicate with users even when their Foursquare application is not open. And the idea is to be more helpful to users as they walk around the real world uh, and their communities and remind them very proactively of things that they may want to see or visit or, or check out. So in particular what we do is we look on your Foursquare to-do list. That's a part of the Foursquare experience. It's almost like a bookmarking service for the real world. It's a, it's a place on Foursquare where you can list all of the restaurants you want to go to or, or all of the uh, the, the, the new bars in the West Village that you want to go to. So if those items are on your to-do list and you walk that nearby, Foursquare Radar will send you an alert that says, hey, do you remember you wanted to go to this new bar? You're two blocks away. And so it serves as, a, as a, a better delivery tool for some of the content and services that Foursquare offers. Um, another new product uh, that, that's coming up uh, that's of particular interest, we think, to media companies is something called Save to Foursquare. Uh, it's a new version of a product we launched last year. Uh, at the time, we called it Add to Foursquare. And we're now making it much better and much more powerful. And the idea is that when you're on the website, when, when you're on the web, <coughs> excuse me, when you're on the web visiting a website of your favorite newspaper or magazine, of course, many times you read a, a terrific review of a new restaurant or a new museum opening or, or a new movie. And maybe you forget about it. You read about it one moment and it's not for another four weeks that you're actually uh, in uh, the West Village in New York near that restaurant that you read about. So the Save to Foursquare button sits on the websites of publishers and it might sit right next to that restaurant review for that new sushi place in the West Village. And when you read the review, you hit the button, and the content of that review is put into your pocket because it's being sent to your Foursquare to-do list. And so then, three weeks later, ten weeks later, twelve weeks later, when you're actually near that sushi place, Foursquare will send you a reminder that says, hey, you wanted to save this review, you wanted to check out this restaurant, you're two blocks away. I mentioned some of the examples earlier about how newspapers are using our tips product to create really local information for people in particular neighborhoods. Another tool that newspapers are using are badges. So Foursquare is a bit famous for the badges we create uh, to incentivize people to go and do fun and interesting things. So for example, you get the gym rat badge if you go to the gym ten times in, in a given month. We also make some of those badges available for partners. And so the Wall Street Journal, for example, as a, as a newspaper, 
uh, they launched a New York News specific section uh, last year and they worked with Foursquare to create badges specifically for New York City activities. So for example, they gave out a badge called the Power Lunch Badge on Foursquare. If you went to a certain set of four or five restaurants down at Wall Street where uh, the big fancy financiers would go. So those were called, uh, you know, it was called the Power Lunch Badge. So um, that's an example of a local marketing initiative that a newspaper took. Um, I think it's really hard for organizations to do things they're not good at. And building technology and applications is incredibly sophisticated, uh, detail-oriented, and requires a whole set of resources and processes and skills that big traditional media companies may not have. So, uh, indeed, they typically don't have. So, uh, to me, it's not a surprise that uh, that we see partnership models evolving more than anything, where a big traditional publisher or TV company will either partner or, or perhaps buy small startups to integrate technology in that fashion.